In this video, we're going to learn about drawing pieced blocks with the Easy Draw tools. One of the most important things to remember is that you are drawing the seam lines of your block. All lines or curves must be touching or intersecting with another line or the edge of the block. Please watch the do's and don'ts of Easy Draw video for tips for properly drawing a piece block in Easy Draw. Let's talk about the basic snapping options. On the drawing board, you'll notice a bunch of dots. These are the snap points that will help you ensure that you have a proper drawing. These dots are only active when you have snap to grid turned on in the precision bar. Snap points force your lines to literally snap to a specific spot on the grid, like a magnet. An easy rule of thumb is to set your snap settings to a multiple of your block size. If you plan to make a six inch square block, make your snaps a multiple of six. So to get half inch snaps for your block, multiply the block size times two, making your snaps 12 and 12. If you want quarter inch snaps for your block, multiply the block size times four, giving you snaps at 24 and 24. If you want even smaller increments, multiply the block size by eight to get eighth inch snaps of 48 and 48. Again, these snap settings are only applied when the snap to grid button is turned on. Notice when we change from 24 snaps to 48 snaps, the number of dots you see on the drawing board didn't change. You'll notice that I should have eighth inch snaps, but there are no dots at the eighth inch marks. The snaps are actually there as they should be, but EQ doesn't draw a dot for every snap point. This is to avoid a messy drawing board because when your snap points get to be a really high number, displaying all those snap points would make it more difficult to draw. Your drawing board would get too cluttered with dots. Watch my cursor when I try to draw a line at the eighth inch mark with the snap set at 48. It works just fine. Now when I try to draw at the eighth inch mark with snaps at 24, my line jumps to the nearest quarter inch snap point, as it should. As you're drawing, you can continue to change these numbers to accommodate your drawing. You're never stuck with your initial settings. Let's go ahead and draw a six inch block with 24 snaps. That puts a snap point at every quarter inch. Another helpful tool for drawing blocks is the graph paper. Graph paper displays visual guidelines for your block. If I set my graph paper cells to the same size for my block, six and six, I'll know that the graph paper is at every one inch. Also, make sure snap to grid and snap to node are both selected on the precision bar. I'll show you why in a minute. For this lesson, we're gonna draw a witch's hat. I'm gonna start by drawing a horizontal line at the one inch mark at the top of the block. I can use the graph paper as a guideline. And then down at the bottom, I'm gonna draw a five and a half inch mark for the base of my hat. I want this hat to be a little wonky at the top, so what I'm gonna do is partition this horizontal line into equal segments. So with the edit tool, I'll click on the line, then change partition to five over here in the palette. When I click apply, the line gets broken into five equal segments, creating nodes between each. This is where snap to nodes comes into play. First, I'll turn snap to nodes off so I can show you how this works. I'll start the side of my hat at this grid dot and draw up to this node. When I release my mouse, the line jumps to the nearest grid dot. Let's see that again. I'll draw my line from grid dot to node, and when I release, the line snaps to the grid, which it should do because I have snap to grid turned on. Now, let's turn on snap to nodes as well. Now, when I draw my line and release over the node, the line snaps to the node because that's the closest option. So always keep that in mind when you're drawing. If there's no grid dot where you want your line to snap, then you should try to create a node. We'll talk about other ways to create nodes next. You could turn on snap to lines and arcs of drawing, 
so that when you're drawing, you actually snap directly to the line. But we really only recommend that for more advanced drawing scenarios. But always tr feel free to try it out and see if it works for you. Okay, I finished my hat, but now I want to add a ribbon at the bottom. Let's make it a wide ribbon at the four and a half inch mark. Again, notice there are no nodes or grid dots where the sides of my hat hit the four and a half inch mark. Another way to create nodes is to draw your line and extend past other lines like this. One tip to know about is that if one or both endpoints of a line do not connect with another line, that those segments will disappear. Let's take a look at that real quick. I'll draw this line touching the edge of the block, but the other endpoint of the line is not touching anything. Now this line completely floats. Both of the endpoints do not connect to any other lines. Watch what happens when I switch to the color tab and back to the draw tab. Both of these lines disappeared and these line extensions also disappeared. However, this line remained because it was intersecting the lines of the hat. Drawing your lines slightly past existing lines and letting the extensions disappear is a great trick to ensure all your lines are connected. So just remember that there can be no endpoints of a line floating on the drawing board. Let's do one more thing to our hat. I'm going to turn snap to grid off for this first part. Did you know you can toggle these options on and off while you draw? This can be super helpful. So draw three diagonal lines, making sure the lines are a bit wonky and the lines extend past the edges of the hat. If you need to, you can use the edit tool to move an endpoint if you don't like the angle of your line. Just click and drag it. My goal here is to create zigzags on the hat but again, I don't have nodes at these intersections. So I'll click the color tab and back to the draw tab. The line extensions are gone and now I have nodes to connect the lines. Click the color tab and now I'll color the hat. Let's take a quick look at the foundation pattern for this block. EQ automatically sections and numbers foundation patterns for you, but you can change the sectioning and numbering if you'd like. Click the Options tab and make sure your block is 6x6. Six six. And be sure Mirror is checked because our hat is asymmetrical. Then click Preview and we have our pattern. I hope you learned a lot from this lesson and are able to apply it to your blocks when drawing an easy draw. If you have any specific questions about drawing blocks or other design questions or other support questions that you need help with, feel free to contact us. We're happy to help. You can email us or during business hours, you can call or use our live chat on our website. It's a great way to get instant help with any of your questions that you might have. Check out the EQ8 Drawing Blocks book by Carrie Shell for more detailed block drawing lessons. You can find it at electricquilt.com. If you're looking for additional help, check out our other lesson books and our EQ Academy classes.